Today I want to take a look at this CPU cooler from AIGO or AGO. Not sure exactly how you pronounce that. If you happen to know, let us know in the comments below. Anyways, this is the Shadow Max CPU cooler. I'll put an affiliate link in the description below from Amazon if you want to check it out. I think I paid 27, 28 bucks for it uh, when I bought it. Uh, this particular cooler supports both Intel and AMD platforms. We're going to put it in this build today, uh, which is an AMD platform. I've currently got the AMD Wraith Prism in there, which has been a pretty good cooler. So, but when I saw this, it looked kind of cool. It's a tower design with some cool RGB lighting. So figured we'd take a look at it. The particular cooler that's installed uses the clip type from AMD. This one uses the spring screw mechanism. So we will have to replace the back plate on the motherboard. This should include all the hardware to do that and the instructions to do it. It's usually not a big deal. You just take your time and do it and everything will be all right. So a couple of the key specs on this you might be interested in. The height of this particular cooler is 141 millimeters. The width is 100 millimeters. So you want to make sure that whatever case you're putting it in will fit that. I think that'll fit in most cases, but you know, you'll want to double check what the max height is of the cooler that your case will allow. So uh, it's got five uh, copper pipes in it. Uh, the max airflow is 51.5 CFM. Fan speed varies from 800 to 3000 RPMs. And the fan noise is rated at 30.5 decibels. So let's go ahead and get this installed. Obviously, we're going to take a look and see how it compares aesthetically and visually to the Wraith Prism. You'll have to be the judge of it, whether you like that or not. And then we'll just do some basic comparisons in the cooling uh, department between this and the Wraith Prism. Obviously, your results to that are going to differ. You know, this case is not particularly well suited for cooling in my uh, experience. And there's a lot of variables, but we'll just do a kind of a comparison of the cooler itself and see how. All right, so let's go ahead and open up the box and see what all is included with this. All right, so you get the heat sink itself, obviously, and there is no thermal paste pre-applied. There's just a thin protective film here that obviously you need to remove before you install that. Get the RGB cable uh, pigtail, and then you get the four pin PWM power connection for the fan itself. Get the box full of accessories, which will include, it looks like all of your bracket hardware. Does include some thermal grease that you can use should you not have anything else. An RGB cable, and this does include the standard three pin ARGB connection. All right, let's go ahead and look at the instructions and get this bracket installed.
All right, well, there you have it. There is a quick look and comparison test of the Ego Shadow Max CPU cooler. Um, I compared it to this uh, AMD Wraith Prism, which is a stock cooler. Um, overall, my impressions of this are fairly positive. I think the look is pretty cool. You know, it's a unique tower design. It's got a kind of a unique fan up in the center there. And the RGB elements, although simple, they're only in the top and just right here. And they kind of just shine through this Ego printed on logo. Um, I, it looks pretty good. Um, I plugged it into the ASRock motherboard and it controlled just fine. Um, if you unplug that connection and have no control to it, it just reverts back to a rainbow design, which actually looks pretty good on that. So performance wise, just doing some basic testing, you know, the similar in both cases, just pushing that CPU and GPU as hard as I could. Um, I was getting pretty similar results with, it seemed like the Ego to me looking at the charts, probably on average does a, a degree or two better. Now that could be in the uh, margin of error, you know, for this particular test it can be all sorts of variables from test to test. So um, anyways, it wasn't so much better that you would choose this over this, but that was just my experience with it is I think, you know, a degree or two better, you know, which is not really saying much. So anyways, overall, I think if you're looking for a good, cool looking, uh, you know, CPU cooler, yeah, there's always better choices out there, right? But, you know, for 27, 28 bucks, it did okay. If you like this uh, and you're just doing a budget build with, you know, no crazy overclock and things like that, you'd probably be all right with this. Um, I would certainly use it again. So, all right, well, that is going to do it for today. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, whatever, put it in the comments below and I'll answer those as best I can. Again, thanks for watching. Bye.